it, and, and, you know, I, I don't necessarily begrudge the vacation. If you can swing it, you know, good for you. You know, just, just to keep that clear, it, it's just, again, what's my motive for, for working? Yeah, obviously it's taking care of my, helping take care of my family. But it's also got to be, again, for, for in my case, the, the greater good. I mean, that's why I volunteered. You know, nobody volunteers for the money. That's so kind of oxymoronic. Right. But that's, that's the, of course, when people ask why I volunteer, you know, when I was with Winmore, you know, burning buildings and doing rescues and hazmat, it's like, oh, I do, I'm doing it for the money. Because, and they say, well, that doesn't make sense. Well, why do you think I, I'm volunteering? It's because I want to do their, I want to, what was it, Elliot Ness, Kevin Costner, you know, to do some good. Yeah. It's corny. Yeah. But when I say, you know, oh, I'm volunteering for the money, yes, I'm being a wise guy. However, you know, it also was my way of saying, well, why do you think? Well, it's also it's also when you're volunteering, when people don't understand, they, they think you volunteer to do something, you sit around and wait for something to happen, and that is certainly part of it. But when you volunteer for something, what you're doing when nothing's happening, um, which is good, because that means the world is right. You're every moment of every day you're decreasing their taxes just by being there. Mm -hmm. Uh because they don't realize that if you know, in Pennsylvania if we replaced everybody with paid, that they'd have to put, you know, th three quarters of everything is non paid. So they'd have to come up with a lot of money from somewhere fast to cover all those salaries. Sure. And it would yeah, come absolutely. from taxes. It would come from taxes. Um, um, yeah, people, you know, they pay a raft of taxes already. And what would the reaction be if uh, some of the smaller jurisdictions said, yeah, I've got, we've got to raise taxes so we could pay a, a full-time paramedic or a full-time driver? Um, you know, in the fire service, in, in ambulance services, well, they, they get the bill for their time and and the equipment that is used on a call. And insurance generally pays for that. But the insurance companies aren't paying fire departments, volunteer departments, or any fire department for save, peeling a, a, a car away from someone who's been involved in, in a motor vehicle accident or for putting out a fire in a house. So there's there's that angle to the whole thing as well. And if you transition tomorrow from volunteer paid and you did it miraculously, somehow you started that transition, there's no way you could do that, even putting the money aside, without there being a decrease in service and someone's safety being impaired and somebody's property being impaired because of that during the transition, which would take years. And, you know, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, they're, they're different from a lot of places. I'm, I'm in Montgomery County, Maryland currently. And the county runs the fire services here, the, the, the career services. But there still exists um, volunteer departments. Um, Silver Spring, for example, has been around for 100 years, and it runs combination uh, services. Uh, volunteer and career. Um, so, it, it and, and it, they're able to. We're able to maintain the volunteers uh, through donations and, and whatnot. But you know, it, by necessity, because of the population density here and being in the national capital area, you're going to need career people. Mm -hmm. the, the switch to having, you know, countywide career services happened some years ago for these reasons I'm, I'm speaking of. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it depends where you are. I, I, you know, I was in Pennsylvania. I briefly uh, served at a volunteer company in, in New Jersey. And 
it was, you know, full 100% volunteer. Because, you know, the, the tax basis wasn't necessarily going to pay for anybody to drive, even. And, and I, yeah. I think what happens is that, and I think the real solution down the road is you need a mix, because I think that if you, if you, if you force it, then you're you're putting a burden on people that don't have the economy to support it, and you're in effect reducing the services they get in public safety potentially. You know, uh, who wants to do that? Who wants to be? Who wants to be the Paul who says, "Oh yeah, we cut back our emergency services budget." Right, right. You know, yeah. Who, who wants to be the person that makes their constituents less safe? Exactly. No, and that's that's just that's just <laughs> that's not a good platform. Uh, that's not a good platform. The, the uh, when you, when you were doing uh, when you were doing firefighting, what was uh, what was the best part of the job? No matter what anybody tells you, what draws you initially is that you get to do something exciting. Um, and then if you stick around for a while and get past the red lights and sirens, you become committed to doing the job at the next level professionally. And, and I don't mean for money, but I mean in a professional way. Mm-hmm. And I think the the best part of the job for me, and I still say working as a volunteer at Winmore is the best job I've ever had. I tell that to people. I told that to some probies at uh, Silver Spring who were coming on. I said, I started doing this, and I didn't get paid. It's still the best job I've ever had. And they looked at me like I was nuts, but it's the truth. Mm -hmm. uh, there's nothing like the fire service. Or there are a few jobs where when you leave at the end of the day, you know whether you, things worked. You know that the job you did not only made a difference, but you did it right and to your best of your ability. You know, the, the instant gratification of doing the job well is was huge for me. But I think overall, and again, a corny alert, there's a, something inherently noble about it, about willing to put yourself on the line for a stranger or for your brothers or sisters in the service. I think with I think with anything that you do, especially emergency services, I think that the the ability to go out and say that I'm going to pay my bills and do my forty, fifty, sixty hours a week, and then I'm going to do this other thing to help strangers, mm -hmm. and is is a noble thing that we're seeing less of. And I think that um, you know, and, and one of my one of my pet peeves with volunteers is that. It's not as bad in some places, but in some places people really look down when people say they're a volunteer and they're, you know, versus paid. And I always say to people that volunteer means unpaid, not unprofessional. Yeah. And yeah, that, that's, that's like the way I put it. Now, um, I, I had a roommate for a little while, and she, when I was in Pennsylvania, and she asked, <laughs> so, does this prepare you to be a real firefighter? <laughs> and I had to stop, and a roommate of mine who actually, who, who a, a, a guy who had no history, no knowledge of the volunteer fire service uh, until he met me, said, he just started laughing. He said, like, oh, he loves this question. <laughs> <laughs> like, and, and what's the answer? The answer is: Have you ever seen a, a, an imitation fire? Right. 
Everything right. I do is real. Well, it, and, and it, yeah. Yeah, and it's, 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 I understand there's a difference, but I think there's something to be said for somebody who makes the choice to do it without looking at a time clock. Without, you know, um, you know, I'm leaving when the overtime's over, this, that. There's something about it. And I think that freedom to choose can make people stronger. It can also make people weaker in volunteerism, too, you know. Um, but it, but the, the right few, um, it makes it makes people stronger. And in the fire service, you see people that are just, you know, see the women all the time. You see people that are just born to be in the fire service, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, because it's a family business in a lot of ways. It's, it, yeah, the family business. You don't have that in, in many things. You, you don't have that in the... Um, yeah, in in many things anymore, there's things that don't transcend generations, and that's why good, bad, and different, or whatever. Uh, whenever I hear that a uh, a volunteer organization has closed, it just it just hurts a little because you're losing tradition. Mm. Uh, you're losing tradition. Yeah. You're, there's, there's a, a piece of the community is dying. Right. Right, because that really is that really is neighbors helping neighbors. You know, that's uh, um, that's, there's there's only there's only two things that have been around kind of that long that have been helping out in the communities, and that's the fire service and the church. You know, mm-hmm. and they are on different ends of the spectrum, uh, but. They've depending been on to, who you talk to. Depending on who you talk to. But they've been there to help, you know, uh, without without judgment, without, you know, casting doubt. Um, the, um, uh, with, with the emergency management direction you're going in, uh, what would you, what would you like to see ultimately, uh, what would be your dream? For myself, job? Um, yeah. My dream job, uh, I, I said during one particularly bad job interview, is astronaut. Um, but I'm too old and I just can't do the math. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, yeah, I actually did say that. Um, I knew it wasn't going anywhere. I had nothing to lose. Um, followed by, do you validate? Because uh, I think we're done. <laughs> fortunately, it was just on the phone. Uh, so I, I lost no money for parking. But I think, you know, in, in emergency management, you know, I, I, I'm attracted to the field in total. Don't get me wrong. I think planning uh, would be definitely a really interesting way for me to go because, let's face it, in the emergency services, everything is based on what happens if. You know, the worst case scenarios. Well, if I could get involved in in planning for events or on the mitigation side, then maybe we can stop some things or I can help prevent loss of life and property in that way. Um, making sure, like with mitigation, to, to mitigate existing hazards, working to uh, on plans for that, would go a long way, and certainly planning for pre-planning for responses and, and for the coordination of multiple agencies, so that operations are more seamless when they count. Um, that's worth a whole lot to me. It is. It stops, yeah, you can help more people through planning and mitigation. Then you can do hump and hose. You can help more people do education. You know, uh, ultimately education. See, there's all these, there's all these ways that people can be helped that are behind the scenes too. But you need what you need when you're under the gun and things get through those plans. Um, I think one of the problems people have with plans. I see a lot of plans that people 
Right, and they're planning for disaster. 